Now that we defined already the position only and the orientation only, uh, we're going to define now both position and orientation in space. And in this case, we call it frames. Okay, so define the position and orientation of an object relative to coordinate frame A. And of course, uh, a new frame B uh, on the object is required, exactly the same as we did in the orientation only. Uh, in this case, we describe uh, frame B relative to frame A, uh, both position and orientation. Okay, so let's look at this now. We have frame A, it has X A, Y A, and Z A, and we have an object here, and we attach a frame B to this object, frame B that has X B, Y B, and Z B. Okay, we call it frame B. Now we need to define frame B, both position and orientation of frame B relative to frame A. Okay, now we have already known uh, how to describe orientation through the rotation matrix. So the rotation matrix here is a three by three matrix that has three directional vectors. Okay, and then we know how to describe also the position of the origin of frame B. This is the origin of frame B. Uh, and for that, we use uh, the vector P relative to frame A, okay? So vector P of the origin of B relative to frame A is a three by one vector that describes the position uh, relative to frame A, okay? So if we want to describe frame B, we have to have the rotation portion that describes B relative to A, and then we have to have the position uh, vector of frame B origin relative to frame A. Now to simplify that uh, matrix and vector combination, this is a matrix and this is a vector. If you would like to come, you know, uh, simplify this, we can use the homogeneous transformation matrix uh, that would include both of these in one uh, matrix that's of four by four size. Okay, so we call this transformation matrix T of B relative to A. And in this matrix, we position the rotation portion on the top left corner and then the position vector in the top right corner. OK, so this is a three by three and this is a three by one. All right. And then at the bottom row, we put zero, zero, zero under the three by three, three, by three rotation and we put one under the three by one position. OK, so that gives me a four by four transformation matrix. Now I want you to distinguish between the word transformation and the word uh, translation. Okay, when we talk about translation, we're talking only about the position. Uh, when we talk about transformation, we're talking about both position and orientation. Both of them uh, are um, together combined are called transformation. Now the both transformation matrix has three unit vectors on each frame for the orientation which are uh, expressed here in the rotation ma matrix, and one vector from a frame to another frame for position, which is expressed here as P of B origin relative to frame A, which is a three by one. Now symbolically, the way we write this, if this is frame A and this is frame C, I'm going in a line from A to C with the arrowhead pointing towards C, that means I'm describing C relative to A, okay? So this means that C is known relative to A and not vice versa, okay? So whenever you have the arrow here, the arrowhead is this way, that means I'm describing C relative to A. So the way I write it is P and then uh, underscore sub, sub C, and then in the top left, I put the reference frame, which is A. Now I want you to look at this figure here that describes frames relative to one another. So I have here four frames, frames A, B, C, and D. Okay, And each one of these frames uh, is described relative to another frame. For example, let's look at this. Okay, This here, the arrowhead is going from A to B. And that describes transformation matrix of B relative to A. So B relative to A. Okay. The way I like to think about this, think about this as gravity. If I have a line that starts at A and then falls down to the floor, 
that's the arrowhead going down to the floor, starts at A and it ends at B. That's what we have here. We're starting at A and ending at B. If you look at this symbol, the line starts at A and falls down into B. So that's where the arrowhead is. Okay? That means we are going from A to B or we are describing B relative to A. Okay? Going from A to B or describing B relative to A. Same thing here. If I'm going from D to A, that means I'm describing A relative to D. So transformation matrix of A relative to D. When I look at this here, okay, I'm going from D to C, which means I'm describing C relative to D. So transformation matrix of C relative to D. Okay. Now think about this. If I don't have this relationship here, okay, I have you know, relationship, I would like to find a relationship between C and B, describe one in terms of the other, okay? If you think about this algebraically, going from T, from C to B along this line is the same as going from C to D and then D to A and then A to B, okay? And we're going to look more uh, on, on this and uh, see how we can find out this relationship uh, when we like when we look at uh, compound transformations. Now let's take an example on this. Uh, describe frame B relative to frame A if the origin of frame B is positioned at negative 2, 3, and 5 in x, y, z relative to frame A. And B is rotated 30 degrees about z axis relative to frame A. Okay? So if you notice here, I'm given position of uh, the origin of frame B relative to A, right here, this is position. So that gives me the position vector. And then I'm also given uh, the orientation of B relative to A, uh, which is rotated 30 degrees about Z axis relative to frame A. Okay, so that gives me the rotation matrix that I need. Okay, so this describes the rotation, and this one here describes the position of the origin of frame B. All right. So let's see how we can solve this. First of all, I'm going to draw it. So this is my frame A in black and then frame B in red. And then I have a position from A to B, which is described by uh, the uh, P of B origin relative to frame A. Okay. And that value, we can take it from this one right here, negative 2 and 3 and 5. And then the frame a frame B is rotated or oriented uh, differently from frame A, which includes a rotation about Z axis by 30 degrees, positive 30 degrees. Okay, so this is a rough uh, drawing of uh, this relationship. Now to solve this, I'm going to have to do the transformation matrix. Here's my transformation matrix that describes B relative to A. And the first three by three elements that you see right here, this is my rotation matrix. And if you recall previously, we found out that if we have rotation about Z, that means in the rotation portion, the lower uh, right corner will be one, and then the remainder of the row and column will be zeros. I'm only talking about the first three by three matrix. And then here we have cosine, negative sine, and sine and cosine of 30 degrees. So I just put here for simplicity, C means cosine and S means sine. Okay, so this makes my rotation matrix. And then for the position, I put a vector here for the position of the origin of frame B relative to frame A. And that's given here as negative 2, 3, and 5 in X, Y, Z. So negative 2 and 3 and 5. Okay, and then the bottom row here is always 0, 0, 0, and 1. Always the same values uh, that we put there. Okay, so that solves this problem, and we can see here how the transformation matrix 4x4 four four describes both position and orientation. Now let's take an n-class exercise. Uh, describe frame B relative to frame A. If the origin of frame B is positioned at 5, negative 12, and negative 4 in x, y, z relative to frame A. And B is rotated 45 degrees about the x-axis relative to frame 
A. Okay, so you have the position of frame B relative to A right here, and then you have the rotation of frame B relative to frame A about x axis by 45 degrees. So I'm going to pause for a few seconds. Please pause this video and try to solve this problem or exercise on your own. Once you are done, you can resume the video to see the answer uh, that I have here. Now I'm assuming that you have finished solving this exercise. I'm going to show you the solution. So the solution to this problem, I have the rotation portion here. Since the rotation is about x, that means the top left corner would have a 1. And then the remainder of the row and elements of the first 3 by 3 will be zeros. And then we have cosine, negative sine, and sine and cosine of the rotation angle, which is 45 degrees. Okay, And that would be the first 3 by 3. And then the vector for position, that 3 by 1 vector, would be... 5, negative 12, and negative 4 in x, y, z. So I placed them right here. And the bottom row is always 0, 0, 0, and 1. Now let's take another exercise. I would like you to do as well on your own. Describe frame B relative to frame A if the origin of frame B is positioned at 7, 0, and negative 1 in x, y, and z relative to frame A. And B is rotated 80 degrees about the y-axis relative to frame A. Okay, so we have three elements for the position of the origin of frame B relative to A. And then we have a rotation of frame B relative to frame A about y-axis by 80 degrees. I'm going to pause for a few seconds until you solve this exercise. And then I'm going to resume uh, to show you the answer. Please pause the video until you are done solving it. Okay, now I'm assuming that you have done solving this exercise. I'm going to show you the answer. So this is the transformation matrix that describes frame B relative to frame A. It includes the first 3x3 three three rotation matrix here, which has rotation about Y. So that means the middle element here is 1, and the remainder of the same row and same column would be zeros. I'm talking about only the first 3x3 three three right here. And then you have cosine, sine, negative sine, and cosine. Remember, the negative in this case comes here in the left uh, bottom corner. Uh, and these cosines and sines are for the angle of 80 degrees angle of rotation. And then for the position, we have 7, 0, and negative 1. So these are placed here in the position vector, 7, 0, and negative 1. And the bottom, again, as usual, 0, 0, 0, and 1. 